Health. And I'm really excited that today we'll be talking with Deja Fox, an amazing, impressive activist, and uh, I've known her a while. Um, looking forward to having her join us. And we'll be talking about our collaboration with TurnUp.us and um, and and our collab. So. So if you have any questions about reproductive health, reproductive activism. Hey. Hey, Dave, long time no long see. Time no see. How are you? Good. Where are you today? Um, I'm in my apartment here in New York City. Uh, it's kind of sunny. The sun is shining directly in on me, but don't mind that. Um, yeah, I'm here in my apartment in New York. Uh, how about you? Where are you calling in from? I I am in Washington, C Washington, D.C. with the American Academy of Pediatrics. Oh. They're having their national conference. And I'm missing Fauci right now, but anything no. for turn up. Oh. And get I know. I know. Oh, I'm going to no. try to run over and get a picture with him later. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You have to. Um, and we all want to see it. So we'll definitely be following along on your personal and the Pandia account to see. Um, do we want to kick it off with maybe just a little bit of an introduction? Um, I'm getting some buffering. Could be on my end. Okay. Yeah, no, my end seems to be okay, but you okay, know, got it. Um, yes. You want to go ahead, introduce your amazing self, sure. what you're up to, and then I'll introduce Candia Health. Sure, sure. Um, my name is Deja Fox. I use she and her pronouns. I am a longtime reproductive justice advocate um, who grew up, was born and raised in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, I currently live in New York City um, where I went to college. I'm a first generation college student uh, and a recent grad, class of 2023. Um, I'm the founder of Gen Z Girl Gang, which is a digital collective uh, based in redefining sisterhood in the digital age. And I'm a content creator signed with Ford Bottles. Um, so those are some of my, some of my titles, some of my things. I'm an Aries. I'm a licensed bartender. Uh, I'm the most um, online big sister extraordinaire. Um, what about you? You want to hop in with a little bit of a bio? Yeah, amazing. Um, I grew up well, born in Chicago, shipped off to Taiwan for two years where my aunt raised me. And then um, parents brought me back, um, met up with them at UC Berkeley, and then kind of grew up in uh, the Bay Area, Silicon Valley since kindergarten, went to school in Boston, froze my butt off four years and said I'd never do that again. So real. And then <laughs> came back to UCSF, one of the top medical schools in the world, and then Children's Oakland to practice pediatrics, learn pediatrics, and then back to UCSF to specialize in adolescence, what we call sex, drugs, rock and roll, a little acne, some sports medicine, and I've always just been passionate <laughs> about reproductive health, reproductive yeah. rights, access to confidential reproductive health care, access to comprehensive sex ed, and then a uh, master's of public health at Berkeley just to get all the degrees in the Bay Area. Oh, and then <laughs> town to Stanford where I'm a clinical associate professor in adolescent medicine where I teach future doctors and current doctors how to take care of teenagers, kick the parents out of the room, talk about sex, drugs, rock and roll, bring yeah. the parents back in the room. And then um, my latest passion is hashtag periods optional in addition to emergency contraception and educating people that what's coming over the counter is not all that. If you can mm -hmm. get stuff from hashtag, get the good stuff, all about hashtags, hashtag, get the good stuff um, from a doctor or provider, do that and don't go with what's going over the counter because that's second rate. But what's over the counter is the best thing you can get over the counter. But if you can get access to a doctor, then Pandia Health, um, which is right. The, that's um, for my next question, which is, what is Pandia Health? You're going live from the account now. Tell us a little bit about it, how it got its, um, you know, starts. What's different about it than other, um, other things like it? Uh, yeah, give us the rundown. 
Yeah, thank you so much for asking. So Pandia Health is the only women-founded, women-led birth control delivery company. And I started it with my co-founder, Perlini, as well as four other co-founders. So we had six co-founders, five women, one guy, because he was the CTO. And we just thought it'd be fair that if everybody else is claiming co-founder, he should get co-founder too. He didn't ask for it. And then um, we've diaries down to like three of us out of the original now, but yeah. still the intention was there. Um, the whole idea was, I was giving a talk to a bunch of doctors, mm -hmm. why don't young people take their birth control? And one of the top reasons was, didn't have it in the hand, didn't have time to run the silly pharmacy every single month, yeah. um, seven days in advance, no more than seven days in advance, otherwise insurance won't pay for it. Right. And so we're like, set it and forget it, let Pandia worry. So you don't have to. So yeah. if you have a prescription, you have insurance, thanks to the Affordable Care Act, thanks to Obama, Biden, no copay, no deductible, AKA free. Mm -hmm. And then you get um, a high shoe is our default goodie, but sometimes it's stickers, sometimes it's Funny. makeup. Yes. Wow. And then um, it also comes with a postcard and we call that the Pandia PSA public service announcement. Yeah. So always an interesting new fact. Hey, did you know you can make hashtag periods optional? Just yeah. skip the placebo yeah. or it's good for your skin. It's good for decreasing ovarian endometrial colorectal cancer, et cetera, et cetera. And then we ran ads, free birth control delivery. And 60% of the people that responded didn't have a prescription. <laughs> and it's like, don't you know, in the United States, you need a prescription. But luckily, I'm a doctor. Yeah. I can write prescriptions. And so the whole Pandia Health platform was born where if you need a prescription, it's only 30 bucks once a year to use our expert yeah. doctors. Unlimited follow-up questions for an entire year about anything birth control. Not acne, not asthma, because you only paid 30 bucks and we're only doing birth control. Yeah. But um, we didn't want anybody to stop using the birth control because they had side effects or questions or anything like that. And then as a person of color, I realized what well, we were being taught at the major institutions, great if you're a Caucasian female that wants to bleed every month. But if you're of Asian or black descent, it doesn't work so well. Talk to my fellow Asian black doctors like, oh yeah, that drug, we're telling everybody to prescribe in all, this, mm -hmm. all the institutions. Mm -hmm. Great if you're a Caucasian, but if you're Asian or black, we saw a lot of side effects. Mm -hmm. And so using my MIT, UCSF, Stanford brain, I took all the birth control pills, ranked them. Most likely make you bleed, least likely make you bleed. Most mm -hmm. likely give you munchies, least likely mm -hmm. give you munchies. Most likely give you zits, least likely give you zits. Yeah. Took the UCSF Stanford thing and then fixed it for people of Asian and black descent. So we have 82% retention for newbies on the birth control Very pill cool. versus standard 55 or even 30%. Yeah. So if you want the best birth control care, we're bringing it wherever you have internet and a mailbox, we can prescribe it to 17 states and we can deliver to all 50 and we encourage birth control tourism. <laughs> so like we're not in New Jersey or Connecticut, okay. but who doesn't get to New York once a year? So yeah. if you can just get there and be like, I'm in New York right now, then our New York doctor's like, okay, I yeah. will write that prescription. And then we can send it to all 50 states. You just got to get back to one of the states once a year. And then um, we are expanding as we get more money. So if you know people with money, send them our way. We're always loving investment. Okay, so just to check my understanding, synthesize here. Pendy is different because it's women-founded, doctor-led, right? Women of color-led. Uh, and it means that you all are doing things differently. I really appreciated your anecdote about, you know, the birth control. And I think this is something that's really important to me on a general level, right? Um, is that the norm is set as, as women, as white women, right? Mm -hmm. And that you all have gone above and beyond to be inclusive of particularly black and Asian women um, and folks who are using birth control. Um, I love this, this, uh, piece that you said that all you need is internet and a mailbox right and you deliver to all 50 states that's what you mm -hmm. said but um you know you got to get to one of the states where you can do uh get the prescription uh it's only 30 dollars, which i think is great i recently uh, i'm a recent grad and so i know me and a lot of my friends are in interesting transition periods with our health care 
um, people are moving, people are falling off their school's insurance, right? Like a lot is happening. Um, and I think that also speaks to what you're saying, which is that when you cater to young people, you have to look holistically at our lives, right? About how hard it really, and that it really is tough sometimes to get to, a, um, to get to the pharmacy every month on a specific day um, when there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so much movement and transition happening for, for most young people. Um, so, okay, tell me a little bit then, as we're focusing, zoning in on young people about this peti uh, petition between Pendia and Turnup. Yes, so we are so happy to collaborate, support Turnup, which is an organization getting out the vote high, mm -hmm. in high school seniors and those of voting age. So if you're a junior in voting age, all the power to you. And then um, college students as well. Mm -hmm. And so the petition goes to governors of anti-abortion states, mm -hmm. as well as presidents of any universities or colleges in those states. So okay. if you're applying to college, if you're applying to grad school, it just says, if you don't respect my bodily autonomy, I'm not applying to your college. And mm -hmm. um, the example is my daughter happens to be a high school senior. Maybe that is oh, really? Saturday. And she's applying to colleges. She's Asian American, brilliant, going to be in computer mm -hmm. science. Wouldn't you want that in Texas, Georgia, Tennessee, Louisiana, Nebraska? And if she likes her state, then she might stay, build a family there and mm -hmm. contribute, you know, but she's not going to any state that doesn't respect her bodily autonomy because the horrific statistic is one in four college educated women will be sexually assaulted. And that's just as a mother of two daughters. Ah! Yeah. And, and just as a person with a uterus. Ah! And so, you know, if that happens to them, I want them to be able to do whatever they want, their body, their choice. And these states are not treating us as equal citizens, those of us with uteri. Yeah. And I think this really speaks to an important power mapping, right? That like, these universities um, have a, a sway over um, the states that they're in because of the economic power they have, right? Because yeah. of the, the ways that they are affecting the states that the states and the cities that they that they are residing in, and that every university is made up of its students, right? Who pay to go there? Who who um, relocate their lives? Who tie their names and the rest of their like? career to these institutions and that young people in so many ways get to flex this power and say that this is a choice I'm making and it's a big choice for me in my life um and it's to say that you know um young people are going to use that power that they have to push up against these institutions to tell them to tell these states to do better to leverage their power their pre-existing power but also to put the you know those electeds in check that um that young people care about this issue and are willing to make personal choices based on it. And I think, you know, regardless of what issue you're passionate about, um, that's a really important lesson when we're thinking about pushing our electeds. It's about asking who has the power to make the changes I want to see. And sometimes it's not just your elected officials, right? Sometimes it is those university presidents who can, um, who can, who can use the sway of their institution to make a difference. And then it's also about saying, okay, um, how can I make the case to them, right? Like, what is my personal story? What's my tie-in? And I think that the idea of being, you know, an 18-year-old looking at who you want to be, where you want to go, where you want to live, where you want to start a life um, is definitely a powerful position in its own way um, to leverage here. So, okay, that's the the petition, where can people go to sign it right now as we're speaking? Yes. Or how can people I'm going to type it in the comments, but it's also in Pandia Health okay. um, bio and link tree. It's uh, turnup.usa okay. forward slash petition. Okay. And we would love it if everybody just goes and signs and then like forwards it to all your friends, uh, post it everywhere you know. It's a pretty cool artwork because you know me, I'm all about the uterus. And so there's definitely a cute little uterus involved here, people. <laughs> anyway, okay, so people can go to Pentia Health's account right now, click the link in bio. And mm -hmm. question, do you have to be a high school senior to sign this petition? No. Right. Anyone can sign Everyone this. Sign it. <laughs> um, and then is there a next step? So I, I think there's a letter writing component too, right? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like if you're feeling really um, jazzed 
you're yes. excited, you're like in front of your computer right now, what, what's that next step or what's that, that lead? Yeah, if you're willing and able to take the next step, pick a president of a college. Mm -hmm. If you're an alumnus, send mm -hmm. a letter saying, I want future students from everywhere. We want diversity. We want the brightest and the best. We won't want to be limited mm -hmm. because of the politicians that have decided to do this. And generally, you know, universities are places of, um, of brains and mm -hmm. thinking and, mm -hmm. you know, broader opening and you want just yeah. everything out there. So put that in your letter and tell them, you know, we need to pressure the electeds to respect bodily autonomy. And I actually frame it as religious freedom. You know, my body, my religion, your body, your religion. And this country was founded on religious freedom. And without this, you're pushing one religion over the other and that's not okay. Got it. So people can sign the petition now by going to Pandia Health, the bio, link in bio, sign. You don't have to be a high school senior to do it. Yeah. And they can also write a letter, especially if you are someone who is an alumni of a school in a state that restricts abortion um, or maybe currently living there, um, that's the next step folks can take. Got it. And definitely also, sorry, elected yeah. officials too. So if you have a state elected official or at the state level or the national level, any level, even school boards, yeah. get happy with your email. Yeah. Uh, school boards, the more local, the more, you know, the, the fewer people there are lobbying, pushing, sending those emails and letters, uh, and the more your voice uh, matters in some ways. So totally, totally agree with you on the, the call out for the hyper local. Love it. So um, let's see, what are the key factors in historical events that have shaped the current landscape of abortion rights in our country? I know you, Deja, have had experience with that, sure. right? Yeah, and I mean, I'm by no means um, an expert in the legal sense um, or in the history here, but to give folks just kind of the overview of how we are in the situation we are in, um, Roe versus Wade uh, constitutionally protected the right to abortion, right? This was something that you grew up with, I grew up with, right? And it's, it's something that we lost in the Dobbs decision about a year ago. Um, it was a reversal of that decision. And so that didn't make abortion illegal everywhere, right? That's not what that decision did. That decision essentially uh, stripped federal protection, stripped constitutional protection um, for the right to abortion, triggering these laws existing in states which are antagonistic to abortion access, um, and essentially through the abortion decision to the states. Um, which is why this campaign in particular, right, of petitioning um, electeds in states that are antagonistic to abortion, petitioning these colleges that are existing within these states is, is especially timely because the decision around abortion has been moved from a federal level, right, to a state's level. And so that's kind of a a historical overview of why we're in the position we're in and why uh, this tactic, I guess, um, makes sense. And so that being said, uh, I think some of the things folks can do, which are really impactful, and you could literally do it right now, is to become a resource within your community. And that means knowing the abortion restrictions or the abortion laws in your state. So that way, if a friend comes to you and asks, right, uh, you have a good answer. Uh, because part of this is also about causing confusion, um, is about, you know, making it so that it is difficult to access abortion. And, and to be clear, people are, will, and always will access abortion, uh, but it has become increasingly difficult, especially in Southern states. Um, and... So all of that to say uh, that one of the biggest things you can do right now is become a resource to your community by educating yourself on your local laws, um, on clinics, good clinics, trusted clinics um, near you, um, 
and I would also, you know, just put a, a call out there to to do some research and maybe even get trained in self-managed abortion. Um, and I think all of those are really important steps that we can do to create knowledge, knowledge bases within ourselves, within our communities that don't go anywhere depending on election. That's amazing. Um, one resource, a couple of resources yeah. I'd love to put out there. Shout them out. One, um, oh. I actually had the honor of uh, serving on the Center for Reproductive Rights Board, and they are the legal arm of the reproductive rights movement. So if you Google after Roe Center for Reproductive Rights, they actually have a map of the United States, and they're updating it ideally every day, but at least once a week of the latest laws of abortion. And so whatever state you're dealing with, you can click on that state and get the latest laws. If there's parental mm -hmm. consent, parental notification, if there's an ultrasound, yeah. if there's a waiting, blah, blah, blah. They have all of that on there. And then the other resource I love is Plan C Pills. Yeah, big plan. big plan C fan. Yes. So Plan C is Plan A is your regular birth control. Plan B is emergency contraception, right. though we generally recommend the prescription emergency contraception over the over-the-counter one. If you're considering the over-the-counter one, the PSA for the day, public service announcement, is check your body mass index. Because if your BMI is 30 or greater, plan B and its generics does not work. And if your BMI is 26 or greater, my BMI is 25, but with a little dessert, 26, then it doesn't work so well. So if it were me, my daughter, my friend, I'd get the uh, prescription emergency contraception ahead of time, any of the emergency contraceptions, stick it in the corner like a um, fire extinguisher. And as I tell my patients, if the condom pops at 3 a.m., I want the medicine in the uterus bearing person's mouth at 310. No cuddling, no huddling, no waiting till the morning after because you want to take it as soon as possible. So um, that's to say uh, plan C is if all that fails and you missed your period, then if you need to take care of that, check out plancpills.org and they too have a map and then you click on your state and it tells you what's available. A medication abortion is roughly 110 bucks and you can also get that in advance of need. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a progressive state, but you're going to a non-progressive state, might yeah. want to pick some up right. and not, you know, mention anything and maybe invest per dorm room, per apartment, per group of 10 female friends or friends with uteri. In case anything happens, one of y'all has it ready to right. go. Right. And I think that really is about, at least this is my theory of it, right, is there's so much we can do on, on an elected level, but there's also only so much we as individuals can do to push our electeds and that legislation and litigation um, can feel like a real barrier and can move slower than our lives, certainly move slower than our lives move. Yeah. And so I, I love that idea of like, even thinking of like your college readiness kit, like what's going in there, right? Thinking about having your, your plan A, your plan B, your plan C all set up and that maybe you may never need those, those things, right? But that you become a resource to your community by having them. Um, and also I want to up something you said, which was, which was around also confidentiality, like, um, knowing, knowing, uh, not only the laws around things like parental notification and consent in your state, but also, um, you know, being, knowing, um, know, knowing the level of discreteness that you need to have around your care, I think is really important right now and the care of others. And so also, a benefit of knowing the laws of the state where you live. And maybe if you're a college freshman, high school senior, you know, you're moving somewhere new, a recent grad heading somewhere new, right? Knowing the laws of that place also is really important in protecting yourself and, and the people around you. Yeah. So from the medical point of view, just want everybody to know that right now, if you go into an emergency room and you had medication abortion, versus a miscarriage, which is called in medical talk, a uh, spontaneous abortion. So they're both abortions mm -hmm. in medical talk, but there's no way to tell the difference with any blood test right now. Mm -hmm. They're working on a blood test to tell the difference and then it will be dangerous for people to use medication abortion only from the legal sense they could yeah. throw you in jail right. or anybody legal who sense. helps you right. in the unfriendly states. But um, know that medication abortion and the medication is safer than Viagra, safe, safer than penicillin, safer than Tylenol, 
And so there is a Supreme Court case out of Texas, Fifth District, that's trying to make mifepristone the main medication of, well, 50% mifepristone, 50% misoprostol. They're trying to make it illegal. And that's totally unacceptable for a drug that's been used by more than 5 million people with uteri in the United States. And again, safer than Viagra, safer than penicillin, safer than Tylenol. This is purely a political move. Absolutely. And just, yeah. No, absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. I think, you know, and I, I do want to distill that as well, that there is a difference between medical risk and legal risk here. And that what we're seeing in these states is both an increase in some ways in medical risk because of delayed care, because of barriers to care, right? But what we're really seeing in these antagonistic states is an increase in legal risk. And we know, right, it, it couldn't be more clear that the people who bear the brunt of, of enforcement of these laws, right, will be, and who, who will be disproportionately affected by the, the enforcement of these laws are the same people who've been disproportionately affected by all forms of policing in this country. And that is people of color, that is low income people, right? Like we know that to be true. And so that's why this is a particularly dangerous moment. It's why it's a particularly important moment for young people to stand up, say we care, especially young people who have a, a level of privilege, right? If you're a young person who's expecting to go to college, who's getting the choice to go to college out of state, maybe, who, who has all of these choices, right? That it is a really important moment to utilize that privilege uh, to make your, your opinion known, right? And so I say all of that to say, uh, this is a really important call to action. Uh, if you go to the Pandia account linked in the top left, you can go to the link in bio, sign the petition. You don't have to be a high school senior to do it. Um, you can take a next step to write a letter to an elected or a college president. Um, and those are some of our calls to action. Um, I also want to ask you just to, to give us the, the plug, right? Where can, folks, uh, where can folks find you on social media um, and any projects that you're working on in our final moments here um, in addition to our call to action? Thank you so much, Deja. You are so professional, so gorgeous, so smart, so powerful. Love it. Love it. And uh, Pandia Health is the Greek goddess of healing, <laughs> light, full moon. That's why we chose her. We're about those of us I'm with uteri. Right I didn't know that. <laughs> and then I also made up the definition. Pan yeah. is every, dia is day. Oh. So we want to be with you oh. every day. Oh. So P-A-N-D-I-A health. And we are on Insta, Facebook, TikTok. Um, YouTube has some great videos as well. I have Dr. Yen's um, top tips if you're starting birth control pills for the first time. And any questions you have, hit us up on any of our socials. I'm on TikTok trying to build my followers. So please give a follow once I, I can get to a I thousand. Mean... <laughs> it's a Dr. Dr. Sophia, S-O-P-H-I-A, Yen, Y-E-N. So TikTok and Insta, that's where you can find me personally. But Pandia Health is my baby, my love, my passion. Just, you know, here to make women's lives better and bring expert care wherever you have internet and a mailbox. I love that. Much appreciated. Thanks for the work that you do. Um, thanks for this conversation and this time. And I hope you make it to your Fauci selfie. Um, the people need to see it. The people need to see it. <laughs> love it. All right. Love Bye. it. So good to see you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And please go to turnup.us forward slash petition and sign the petition and tell anybody you know about it. Also happy to collab if any of you all have um, nonprofits or you wanna share your influence or power. Thanks, bye.